Mina, Gumbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, back with some Psalms. Um, last time I kind of covered the um, beginning of the Psalms, just the entirety of the book. I'm going to skip over Psalm 1 and go straight into Psalm 2. Just read that for the day. And I feel, like, of course, there are a few chapters I've missed here and there just because primarily of the Sunday messages, the 30 minute message. And some days, honestly, I've just forgotten to upload and that was completely on me. But this time I just felt that between Psalm 1 and Psalm 2, I was like, Psalm 2, just, it has a message that I really want to deliver. It's a little bit mean, but it's nonetheless a true message. And this is going, let's just read, well, I could read the entire Psalm, but let's read at least through verse 6. Starting in verse, so Psalm 2, verses 1 through 6. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? Something vain, something futile, pointless, fruitless. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I'll go ahead and read verses 7 through 9 as well. It's pretty short and pretty quick. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. <clears throat> Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. He shall break them with a rod of iron. He shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. The Lord makes no bones about how he's going to kick some butt when he needs to. You, you hear about that a lot in the Old Testament, and there is definitely truth to that. The Old Testament has plenty of murder, plenty of bloodshed, plenty of wars, lots of slavery, lots of killing. And the Lord himself is one who does a good amount of it. And if he's not doing it, he is commanding his people Israel to go into the land and to kill every man, woman, and child. And I've covered that to a degree in some of my previous messages. I will not cover that again here, not at this time. Uh, if you want me to cover it again, I can do that. Just leave something in the comments down below and let me know. That was supposed to be typing. Supposed to be. Just let me know in the comments down below and I can certainly consider that for one of my messages. The word I want to focus on is in verse 4, derision. Now, right before it, it says, He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. And then it says, The Lord shall hold them in derision. You know what derision is? A der it's der it, to be derisive is to look at someone and basically just chuckle, snortle, or laugh at them in a mean or cruel-hearted way. It, it's, it's like... It's like... Um, I'm trying to think... like. Now, all the examples that go to my mind are nerdy, so I'm just going to come to it. For any of you guys who have watched me play my Dark Souls games, I don't know how many of you have, if any. But there's a guy who plays with me, and his name is Robert. And he is really, really, really good at the games. And if I said I was going to beat him in a Dark Souls PvP or a player versus player match, uh, he would laugh at me. And it would not be nice or kind laughter. He would be deriding me. It would be derisive laughter. He'd be like, I will kick your butt from here to Brown Town. You don't stand a chance. Same if he said to me, you know, let's play some World Combat X. I would laugh at him and say, uh, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm going to crush you completely. And then back on his side, if I said, let's play some Super Smash Brothers, um, I was like, what are the latest ones? Melee, Brawl, Wii U. He would laugh at me and say, dude, you're, you're going to get demolished. Back to me. If he said, let's play some Street Fighter, I'd be like, fool, get out of here. What are you talking about? If you want to die, sure. Uh, and it's just that level of, it's such a level of difference. There's such a difference in power. He's so much better at Smash Brothers and Dark Souls than I am. And I'm so much better at Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat than he is. It's just, it's so incredibly one-sided. I If he comes against me, in Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, I'll crush him. If, he comes, if I go against him in Dark Souls or Super Smash Brothers, he'll crush me. It's one-sided. It's a slaughter. It's not a fair match at all. And anyone who goes against the Lord, yes, he has a heart that is full of love. Yes, he wants to save you. But if you insist on being his enemy, 
If you say that you will cast him aside, if you say that you will have nothing to do with him, if you say you will resist him and you will struggle against him and you will win, he will laugh at you. And it won't be a pleasant laugh. It'll be a laugh that'll send shivers down your spine. It'll be a laugh that can send you straight to hell. Don't be fearful of man who can take your life and then when you're dead, there's nothing more he can do. The one who can kill your body and then send your soul to hell. Him, I say, fear. And that was not just me saying it. That was a quote directly from Jesus. So, heavy message. A little bit of a mean message, but if you're going to pick on God or point your finger at God or say, who needs him, whatever, you're in for an incredibly rude awakening. God doesn't want to do it. And in fact, listening to this message right now, this is your ticket out. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to face his derision. You will have nothing but his love. But if you insist on coming at him with all of your sin and saying you're right, he's going to come at you with all of his holiness telling you you're wrong. And you cannot withstand him. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you. And it's in love that I give you this warning. And God bless.